Hey folks, welcome again at the E2E studio. Today I like to do something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. I like to create and to produce my own products. No fancy factory involved, but there's one little issue. I have absolutely no clue how to create and to produce products, but I'm not an idiot, so I like to start simple. You have seen in the title and the thumbnail what I like to do. Buy candles because they are super simple, mainly a tube, so they should be easy to create and hopefully easy to produce. At least that's what I'm thinking at this point where I started. So let's find out if I end in disaster or if I end with super squishy and super soft silicone buy candles. Let's try. The bad thing is I wouldn't be able to do all these videos without some support, but the good thing is I got support. Elegoo sent me their latest resin printer, the Zen4 Ultra, and also a range of their 3D printing resins, which helps a lot to do the molds for the bike grips. And I got also a lot of support from my Patreons. So quick shout out to all of you, my Patreons, and shout out to Elegoo for sending the Elegoo Zen4 Ultra. And what I'm using to print these molds is the water washable polymer resin from Elegoo and the reason is, as the name says, you can wash it with water instead of isopropanol alcohol, but that's what I'll show you later. So it's super handy for creating these molds. Let's fill it in the printer. And when you're working with these resins, you need a good air ventilation. So I'm using the Elegu Mars air purifier for printing. You can connect the air purifier with a hose direct to the Elegu Saturn 4 Ultra. It has an active charcoal filter and also auto function. The only thing I have to do is press on and that's all. Yeah, the first half of the molds looking good. And what I have to do now with the print is I have to wash it and cure it. And to do that, I'm using the Elego Mercury washing and curing combo. And as mentioned before, the resin I'm using is water washable. That's a big advantage. The only thing I have to do is I have to fill the mercury with water, which saves a lot of money instead of filling it with isopropanol alcohol. Now I have to put in the print and then I can do a quick wash. Five minutes of wash should be enough. So let's remove it from the print plate. And off we go. So after set five minutes and then let's do the wash. Thank you. 
and after washing the part I have to cure it with UV light and to do that I'm using the Elegu Mercury UV station. I'll just put it in, set the timer to 5 to 10 minutes and give it a good sun bath. Yeah, I have all parts for the mold, but there are some issues as expected. The first issue is my registration points are too big due to my lack of 3D construction expertise. So I can't slip these two parts into another, but I guess I can solve this with a drill. But there is also another issue. Check this out. So can you see the light shining through the gap in between the tabletop and the part itself? And that's caused by warping of this part. It warped in one of these edges and in theory these parts should be dead flat onto the table but it's not and hopefully I can solve this issue with a bit of sanding. Yeah, I did a lot of sanding to fit these two parts. I removed also the registration marks because I have these four screws for fitting. And now I run into another issue. The hole for the plug is no longer round, so the plug won't fit in. And the only solution I can imagine is to dremel the hole until the plug will fit in these two parts. Yeah, I'm back in the game, folks. I did a lot of sanding and in theory this mold should be watertight. And I have to find out what's the volume of the grip, what's the volume of the silicone I have to mix. And that's exactly a good opportunity to find out if this mold leaks or if it's tight, because I like to add some water. Then I like to add the plug and the rest of the water should be exactly the volume of silicone I need for the grip. So let's do it. Let's put in some water and let's find out if this mold leaks. And what's the volume of the silicone I need for the grip? Now yeah, one or two drips, but it's not that bad because the silicone is much thicker. So let's put in the plug. And that's exactly the volume of silicone I need for the grip. I have absolutely no experience in casting silicone, but I have experience in casting epoxy and fiberglass. And when doing fiberglass molds, it's a must to have a mold release. So I will add it also to my molds. And yeah, if you are experienced and know more than I know, let me know in the comments if it's a must to use also a mold release when doing silicone or if it's not necessary. And I'm using the airbrush. You can use also a brush if you don't have an airbrush kit, absolutely no problem. But airbrush is super convenient and yeah, I only have to spray it in the mold. The moment of truth folks, my first silicone cast and what I'm using is a two component silicone Shaw 32, so medium hard and it's easy to use because the mixing ratio is one by one and I'm using a scale so I know exactly how much silicone is added and I will use also some color and yeah I found this on Amazon. Link in the video description if you want to use it for yourself. So let's start with the silicone and it's called component A and component B. So let's start with the A and the amount I need is exactly 60 gram. So 30 of each. Let's put it in. So let's add the color. I like to go with purple. There are eight different colors in this box, but I have a purple BMX 
And when I get some grips, I will put them on the BMX, of course. So purple BMX and purple color and purple grips. And I have absolutely no idea how much color I have to add. So let's put in some drops. One, two, three, four, and let's mix it. Yeah, three hours later and this block is either a disaster or maybe a bike grip. I'm not that optimistic because the mold split on two edges, but let's find out. That's not a success. Check this out. The silicone is still sticky. Ah, oh, disgusting. Yeah, the mold broke and it seems there's a lot of water on the mold because ooh, there's a little hole. Here on the bottom is a super small hole. And I guess what's the problem? I washed these parts in water as you have seen. And yeah, the accumulated water in the mold itself because it's hollow. And yeah, I broke these holes, the registration marks. And I guess the water was inside the mold and leaked through this little hole in the bottom. And that caused the sticky silicone. Oh, nightmare. Yeah, what can I do better? At first, I have to use a vacuum chamber to get rid of all the air bubbles in the silicone and then I need much better molds than these ones. Will I try it again? Yes, of course. That was my very first try of molding silicone. It looks a bit like a pie candle, but it's sticky as hell and full of air bubbles. And that's what I have to solve before I can do my next pie candle. So yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned from my mistakes. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Ooh. Oh.